Hey everybody, this is Robert Hollis. I hope you're having a wonderful and blessed day. And the subject today is apprentice, apprentice. And so I'll wait for some people to jump on here. It says that I'm now live, so I must be. And um, we'll see if some people pop up on here. This is a really good subject. Uh, I'm gonna refer to this one to a lot of people because I've had a lot of ups and downs in my career. And uh, people are gonna hear from my perspective why I believe that some of those failures went the way that they went. So there's my incredible wife. I know we're live now. Hi, Craig. Hi, John. Uh, it was funny, Craig. Everybody was uh, asking where you were. <laughs> so that just means that you make a big difference on here, and I appreciate you. So hi, Zoltan, Eric, Dustin, Lisa, Kai, Jennifer. I hope you're having a great day as well. Thank you very much. And, uh, and here we go. Hi, Matthew. Love you. Uh, hi, Pat. Christina, wow, we got a lot of people. Ilona, hello, hey, hey. And uh, so here we go. The title again is Apprentice. Now, one of the things that I really truly believe, and again, this is just my opinion, and it, my opinions come from my own personal experiences. Um, but throughout my whole entire life, it was not foreign, foreign to me, that if I needed to learn something, that I needed it to learn from someone that did it. And I got this, believe it or not, from the school system, right? So the school system is like if you don't know English or you don't know math or you don't know arithmetic or history or whatever subjects they say you needed to learn, you know what? You learn them from people that taught that stuff. And I learned to ride a bike from people that rode a bike. I also learned to walk and talk from people that learned to walk and talk. <laughs> Uh, I learned how to be a mechanic, believe it or not, from my uncle and his sons, my cousins, uh, because they had a garage that was within walking distance and they were always building cars. I also learned from my uncle how to weld. Uh, I learned from my cousins and my uncle uh, how to fabricate, uh, how to rebuild motors, how to rebuild transmissions. I started out as an apprentice. Uh, you know, I, I just wanted to be around them to learn this. And so I would clean parts. Most of the time what I was doing is they would tear apart things apart and I'd have to take them to the solvent tank and, and clean them and make them really cool and, and, and clean so that, you know, we could put it back and reassemble it. And it was through me hanging around people that knew how to work on cars that I got good at working on cars. Now I started out, you know, working on bicycles and mini bikes and snowmobiles and motorcycles. But as I consistently did that and I learned from other people, I got great at that craft. Now, what I did too is I don't know how many of you, I'm joking, I'm being facetious here, but I don't know how many of you got a job, right? And when I got my first job, there was a lot of stuff about that job that I didn't know that someone had to teach me. And I had to do it over and over and over before I got it down, right? So, you know, some of my first jobs was working at gas stations. Ah, pretty interesting, huh? Uh, you know, learning how to check oil, learning how to clean windshields, you know, learning how to put gas in a vehicle. You know what I mean? And then from there, I learned how to, you know, do low boil and filters, how to change a tire. I, I used to be great at changing tires. You know what I mean? Fixing flats. And there's all these things that we learn within our job from someone that taught us how to do it. Now, another thing that's very, very smart about being an apprentice is as you step up in levels, you're going to have questions. And it's pretty neat because they're paying you. Make sure you get this point. They're paying you for your job. So it's very easy for them to go, hey, listen, I haven't run across this before. How would you do this? And I could remember my whole life constantly reaching out to people that I knew that were more documented than me, that had already done it. A person can't take you to a place they've never been. A person can't take you to a place they haven't been. I never, ever, ever went to someone and said, you know, this is a unique situation with these brakes. I don't know how to, you know, take this brake caliper off. Um, have you ever taken this one off? No, I haven't. Can you show me how you would do it? I don't know how. 
See what I mean? No, we live in the world of the internet where everyone's an expert. And get this, they're such an expert, people will pay them money and they're not an expert. They didn't do what they are selling the course on. And people just go, ah, well, they said they were successful. Uh, they said they won top awards in other companies. They, they, they said that, so, you know, so I'm gonna buy their course. And I'm just like in my mind, really? Really? You, you actually listen to people that is, are not doing what you're doing? That just is so foreign to me. And so in school, I got into martial arts when I was in trade school. And when I got into martial arts and trade school, I never ever thought of looking at the person that has a black belt, the person that would do all these displays and use nunchucks and use uh, um, uh, a samurai sword and use a staff and he could just make it sound like a, a, a helicopter. I never ever thought about saying to him, you know, well, listen, I just think I'm gonna start my own studio. I'm gonna start my own studio and I'm gonna start my own martial arts dojo. But yet in this industry, people teach that. People actually teach, you know what you need to do? You need to be the brand. You need to start your own dojo. When some of the people that I know teach that, when they first got involved in this industry, didn't do that. That's not what they did. They edified, promoted somebody else that was already an expert and allowed that person with their documentation to help them build a team. So let me tell you some personal stories once I got involved in network marketing and, and direct sales. So I was blessed in my first two weeks I struggled because I didn't know that I was not listening to the right people. Huh? How do I know? How do you know? A lot of you are going, how do I know that I'm not following the right person? Um, your results will show it. Your results 100% will speak one of two things. A, you're not doing it the way you were taught to do it. You're not plugged in. You will not practice. Some of you got to be willing to admit in personal responsibility that you're just not showing up. You're not putting in the time. But some of you are putting the time in and you are being consistent and you are putting the stuff in that you were taught by somebody and it's not getting you results. Okay, so me personally. So I, I keep trying to figure out the exact date, but I guess it really doesn't matter. But you know, it's like probably when I was 27 years old, I got involved in this industry. I struggled for a couple of weeks. And then someone that I talked to that had documentation, I went to a convention, they got to walk across the stage, get this trophy, get all this recognition. And I walked up to him and I asked him, how do you do this business? And really what it came down to is, are you working with someone that's documented? And I said, I don't know. And I gave them the name and they go, I don't know them. And I, I gave them another name and I don't know them. I gave them like five names of my upline. And, and this guy that was in the company that was walking across the stage didn't know who they are. That is a clue. Success leaves clues. Then I finally got to someone that I didn't think that I could talk to that I wasn't enough. I wasn't making the money. They must be so busy. They're so wealthy. I'm not deserving. All this crap that we go into our head, right? And I mentioned the name and he knew right away. He was going, oh my God, you know, she's sponsored by this guy. And I said, yeah, I heard of the guy. In fact, that was the guy that I first seen on video. That was the guy that I first seen on video. And he goes, why aren't you learning and working from that guy? And I said, I don't know. And he says, you do what I tell you. On Monday, this was on a weekend, on Monday, you call the corporation and you get that corporation to give a message to this guy that ended up being my mentor, Bill Gould. And guess what? He called me back. He said, listen, I live in San Diego. Why don't you come out with and work a few days with me? He had no idea that I didn't have any money and I slept in my car. And I went out and oh my God, 
he taught me a lot of stuff that I haven't heard ever. You guys hearing this? Hi, Elisa. Hi, Phyllis. Danielle, Craig, let me see who else, Ola, Sasha, uh, Melody, Brenda, Jessica. Hope I'm not missing anybody here. So now that I go work directly to him, everything that he told me to do was what I teach today. And so immediately I got results. Immediately I started making money. Immediately I started making a full-time income. Why? Uh, the things that I was applying now were actually documented and that made him money. And so I did it. So, you know, here's what's so funny. I just got off a, a, a training with a large group in Hawaii uh, through a dear friend of mine, Mike Miramoto. And I was just doing generic training like I love to do. Uh, and I was just sharing with them the little basic things that you need to do, which I've been doing videos on like uh, expert from afar and edification and promotion and, and learning to share someone else's video. And I still don't know where people get this. I did do a video where I was ranting a little bit and I said, I just don't know why people are rebellious. This is, this is bizarre to me that if you wanted something that someone else had and you, they teach you how to do it, that you would mentally make a decision that you weren't going to do it that way. <laughs> That is like, you know, hey, can you teach me how to make this incredible dessert? I love this dessert. Find someone who made the dessert, uh, maybe hire them or whatever to teach you how to do it. They show you exactly how to do it. And you make a mental conscious decision not to do it that way. That is the most, you know, that will be a conversation that I have with my creator when I get up there is why, why, why is 90% of the people rebellious and they would rather struggle and fail than actually do something the way it should be done? I, I, I don't know if this is ego. I don't know, you know, edging God out, EGO. I don't know what the hell this is, but it doesn't make any sense to me. So for five years, I followed this guy and I just did what he said and I just tried to master the mundane. And the whole key was getting good at connecting, getting great at connecting, reaching out, filling those numbers up, you know, getting those numbers, get, making sure that I got more people in front of my mentors' videos than anybody. That was the thing. You know, uh, a, a dear friend of mine, Fred Herzog, that's no longer with us, uh, he would say, you know, you. You put the, the, the meat in the seats and he'll put the green in your jeans. <laughs> and so I just knew the more people I could get in front of an effective presentation that the rest of it all would work. It would all come together. And so for five years, you know, up till the end of 1992, uh, you know, when Matthew was born, you know, that's what I did. That's what I did. Hi, Gwen. Happy spring day to you too. And so... Now, all of a sudden, my whole mentality is, is uh, that no longer was going my way. In fact, later on, after I left, the, the federal government shut my mentor's company down, Equinox. And what did I do? Maybe for my first time in my life, I thought, you know what? I'm going to be the deal. I'm going to be the brand. I'm going to do it. So I started my own company, you know, it's called UPC Sites. And, you know, I help people create websites and everything was going awesome. It was starting to build and it was sort of like my own company, network marketing company. And it started growing. And then all of a sudden, MySpace came out. And people were like, why do I have to pay $500 and 50 bucks a month for a website when I can get a MySpace site for free? Oh, by the way, when I do get a website, I don't do what you tell me to do. I don't build the site the way you're supposed to build it. And so since I build it and I won't listen to you, then I don't get traffic. And now it just ends up being an expense. And now I'm paying for a website hosting and all of this stuff when I'm not really using the site, nor do I drive traffic to the site. And I don't know how to do all that stuff. So I'm not making any money out of it. So they, they'd stop. 
So then what I decided is since I tried to start my own company that I would be part owner of another company in Michigan. They sold subliminal educational tapes, right? And, and that didn't work. And then I went from there to a company called Quorn and they were based out of Arizona. They sold electronics. It was a network marketing and a lot of leaders from NSA and Equinox was going over there. And then Raymond Hung, the owner of the company got sued by Eric Worre and Jeff Olson. So he just found bankruptcy on the company and shut it down. And why am I telling you this? Is when I didn't have a mentor in my life and then I tried to step in and be the deal, I was gonna be the presenter, I was gonna be the trainer, I was gonna build the brand, I was gonna build the audience, I was gonna do everything. And I'm just saying this for Robert Hollis, not anybody else. I'm just telling you my story. It didn't work for me. You know, I, uh, my wife and I could no longer pay rent. Uh, my wife and my two sons, Matthew and Kyla's toddlers, had to move in with my mother and father-in-law. All the stuff we owned was like in a Quonset. You know, that's sort of like a, a garage with no floor on it. <laughs> All our stuff is in there. I'm sleeping on, you know, people's couches or sleeping on a, a mattress in a garage. And sometimes it takes people a little while to figure this out. And I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I know how to follow a system that works because when you use the system, you get rewarded. So now I, I become a master distributor of a company called New Life out in Atlanta. That's when we moved from Quorum and I moved all the way to Atlanta to be a, a, a person in this company. And I start to build it and all of a sudden the owners of the company say, well, you know, we, we have to make a decision all the money that you brought in, we either got to give them the product that they bought or pay commissions, but we can't do both. And it's during this really awful time in my career, you know, 93, 94, 95. It was March of 95, where finally I humbled myself and went back to the basics. And I go, wouldn't it be neat if I could just get really excited about the possibilities of making income and I'll promote somebody else's videos. And this is how humbled I had to get. The videos and the trainings that I was promoting were people that I actually trained. It was two identical twins, Tony and Mike Koopas, and they started their company the beginning of that year. Uh, I mean, a, a bit that when I left Equinox, they started their company called ACN. And I said, well, listen, it's a startup. Uh, don't worry about it. Da, 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 da. And, and so, you know, in 93 and 94, they had built a big enough group where they were able to show me their checks. Can you imagine if I would have humbled myself and got in at the beginning with them? I could have even been maybe a, a small owner of it. But no, my ego was in the way. So I understand being rebellious. I understand not focusing, I thought I could do it. So in March of 95, I threw up my hands. I became an affiliate with them. I promoted them. And then all of a sudden, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, very good years. You know, got my family back together, moved, had a place in Conyers, Georgia, then moved from there to California. Uh, in the San Fernando Valley, Chatsworth, and then moved to there to Elisa Viejo. First time we've been in Orange County. Uh, everything's working awesome. Then I have sort of a dispute with one of the partners of ACN, and I decide to make an ego decision and leave the company. And when I leave the company, what did I do? I started my own company. Huh. This... The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. But now I got another seven years under my belt or six years, uh, worked, made it to number one, uh, was the number one in the world. Now it's time for me to do this again, right? Ugh. So I do it again, it doesn't work. So now all of a sudden we're what, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, and finally in 2006, uh, I humble myself and I get back into network marketing. Is this sounding familiar to you guys? 
So when I jumped in, guess what? Now I'm promoting and edifying because I know it works. Fred Herzog. Fred Herzog was in my organization in ACN, but now he's making 800,000 a year with Tahisha Noni. So now we're promoting and edifying him. <laughs> this is what my son, by the way, uh, Robert Hollis Jr. decided to join me in this industry. And so now that I'm promoting somebody else and I'm making the company the deal and I'm really, really promoting the system and how to supplement your income, we start flying up the ranks. Then guess what happened? I get a letter from the corporation saying that I was doing predatory recruiting, which I wasn't. But I thought, man, this must be a sign. This must be a sign. So then I got into selling travel with pro travel. Still to this day, my sons were young at this age, but you know, it was like every six weeks or eight weeks, we we're going to another country and doing training there. And so Dominican Republic and, you know, going on cruises and going to you know, Cancun and Al Capoco and, you know, uh, where honey, everywhere. Okay. <laughs> Cabo St. Lucas, what? Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh my God, Terry, that was one of the best vacations we've ever had. And, and the company paid for it all. And then all of a sudden, those things started weird happening. And then all of a sudden, this time, I didn't really make the crazy mistake. I went from there to, uh, um, to Gano Excel. And when I stepped in, I was the number one promoter, the number one promoter of Mr. Liao, the owner of the company. And I knew the basics. I created the videos like I'm creating now. And all I did is point, guide, and direct. I even taught people how to take the videos to put them on their own YouTube channel. So, you know, that they're constantly edifying and point and directing somebody else. And that was a run, man. For those four years, uh, uh, for those four years, um, my God, we did almost a billion in volume, over a billion in volume. And I had 758,000 people in my organization was blessed to do over a million dollars a year. It was just amazing until someone messed that up. So when the owner and the person that ran, you know, North and South America got in an argument, he started a new company called Gano Life and now all of it's going down. And you know, I never said this publicly before, but you know, Terry, my wife I know is on here listening and Craig, you know, Jackman's on here. There's a lot of probably people on here that knew me back in that time. Uh, and one of the unique things is, is it wasn't as easy to promote the owner of Gano Life as it was a documented billionaire that owned Gano Excel. So we all knew him as Joven, just the network marketer. And so now he owns the company and not so easy to promote him, right? And so now he was the deal and, and he didn't do things right and it went out of business. And Craig and Melody are here, that's where I met Melody. And so now that that company's totally done, what would be the smart thing for me to do? Find someone else to promote and edify. No, 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 Robert, come on. You need to start your own deal again. <laughs> and the reason I wanted to share this guy with you guys is every time that I stepped in and made myself the issue is when everything messed up. Eric says, that's what I bet you unlimited profits. So I started this company unlimited profits and it was gonna be what other people had tried to do uh, you know, there was called the People's Network and Eric and Jeff, when they left Quorum, started an educational company. You could turn it into a network marketing slash, uh, um, network marketing slash affiliate company. And we would just sell personal development. And um, guess what? Everyone was getting paid but me and Terry. <laughs> and so now we got this thing going and all of a sudden I write a book, you know, oh my God, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm an author of a book and, and I got my own company and uh, building my own brand and oh my God, you know, I still want to do a, a huge shout out to Matthew, my son, also my other son, uh, he was involved in it, my wife, 
but you know, it just wasn't working. Why wasn't it working when I make myself the deal? I'll tell you why. It's because I've mastered the mundane. I put in over my 10,000 hours and making myself not the deal. I make millions when I can make somebody else the issue. So my goal is to be the number one edifier and promoter of Joss and Jenna's Wagle. Their marketing system, their compensation plan, the 10 brands with over 800 SKUs. My deal is this is a vehicle and this vehicle has got Terry and I back into a million plus a year. And so it really, really blows my mind when I tell you guys about the ups and downs that we've had in our career and how bad and how low the lows were for a number of years. But I say all this with the punch. This is the punch to the story. That if every month you're doing something and you're not seeing a measurable result of your income and you're getting paid going up and your group going up, Stop it! See, I wish I had someone around me that, you know, would have, you know, my wife's always been my number one fan. She's always supported me and, and been my number one fan and takes care of me and the boys. I mean, she's like the best wife on the planet. And so she always believed in me. And so when I decided to step off and make myself the deal, of course she wanted that to work for me. But when I become the deal, I'm just not CEO material. I think I could learn to be a CEO. And I also know that maybe I can learn to be the deal. But I just want to be the best affiliate in the deal. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? And there's so many people out there and I know why they're teaching this. I know why they're teaching this. They're teaching be a brand, build your own brand, be the brand. But the reason that they're teaching you that is because they offer a course. They offer a course for you to buy to be your own brand. And to really knock this down, you gotta watch my video on duplication because the people are looking at what you're doing and they're going, I will never, ever, ever do that. I will never do that. So now you're not teaching duplication in your group. Now you got a bunch of people that are, that's not their calling. That's not what they're supposed to be doing. And they're out there trying to be the deal and every one of us that see them in our organization, see where their volume is. And if they hit a rank, the worst thing is a little success. The worst thing that you could have in your life is a little success. Because if you do something and it works and you make a pretty good check that month, larger than you ever made, and then you get a rank and everyone's giving you praise and recognition for that rank, but you can't sustain that rank and the people in your group hit that rank, and then all of a sudden they drop. So now you got a whole group of people that had their highest check on a month in the past, and they hit a rank, and they no longer maintain that rank, and your whole entire group knows it, but everyone else is outside the group is still giving them praise and recognition for acquiring a check and a rank that they don't have today. It's the biggest facade on the planet. So then what do you gotta do? You gotta go find new people? Well, it's hard to find new people because you're pretending to be the person that was successful. <laughs> <laughs> because you made yourself the issue. And so then there's a thing that comes called burnout. Because you keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, expecting a different result and you don't see it working. So then you get burned out and then you stop. Or you just don't believe in who you are and your abilities to do it within the company that you're doing it in. 
So then what ends up happening, someone else with a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement, reaches out and talks to you about another opportunity, and then you go, that's it. That's it. I'm going to go to that new company with this new idea and this new thought, and I'm going to be the deal again. So you jump into that company being the deal, and now it doesn't work at all. Me and Mike Marimoto was talking briefly before I jumped on here, and it's like people actually believe that the people that they didn't serve in the past, when they go into another gig, that they're going to bring these people with them. And now you get a good shock of reality. Because these people underneath your teaching, your coaching, your mentorship, their checks weren't growing. Because the best way to build yourself up is to make things complicated. So you need a number of courses and a number of hours of one-on-one -on -one teaching and a number of hours of coaching. You need all these personal things. You see what I mean? Because you got to make it complex so then they'll pay you if you're a coach, a life coach. You know, it's like you got to make it complicated. Because if you really told them how simple and easy this business is and the only things they need to practice and, and, and get master the mundane on are very simple things. It's like, I, I do this all the time with losing weight. It's like you read the ingredients on the bottle and it says you can lose weight. All you got to do is eat sensible, sensibly, drink eight glasses of water a day and you know do some kind of form of exercise 20 minutes a day. If you did the thing that they told you to do on the bottle, you'd, you'd lose weight. <laughs> you wouldn't need the ingredients of the weight loss. So I wanted to share that. And I thank you, Gwen and, and Arthur and, and uh, Ola and some of the people that I seen Gwen on here, which I just love and appreciate you, Gwen, so much. She's very successful in another company. And, it, and it's like for you to say thank you for the transparency. I wanted people to know that if your group is not growing, and you got to consistently replace the people that are in your group, then what you're doing is not duplicatable. In this world, you make a large income. You make seven figures a year by having a number of people in your group that are making a full-time income. You guys got that? And so as long as you make yourself the deal, then you're carrying this facade that you got to keep this complexity going. And so a lot of people will be blown away by this last statement. You know, so when, you know, we decided to do the business, Terry and I, and I told everyone because I'm this guru, you know, roberthollis.com, I'm an author, uh, I'm, 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 who cares what I was? Seriously. There's a, a whole group of people that have a story and what they would love to show you is the best month they had months from today, years from today. Is someone showing you documentation of a rank they hit or the income that they made that wasn't in the past two or three months, then they should revamp everything they're doing. So Terry and I went to, you know, record to 500K. And then I realized that I didn't hit the super affiliate mark and get to a million a year because I was too busy being the deal. So this is, you, you, hopefully you become humble. So I decided to shut my brand down. I took all the videos, I didn't charge for any courses, I gave them all for free. So you know, you can go to roberthollis.com, go to training, it's gonna lead you to two Facebook pages. It's also gonna lead you to a, 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 a YouTube channel. And all, I do, I, all my training's free now, everything's free. So. I said, I'm going to stop doing my brand to put 100% focus on me promoting Joss and Jenna and MDC. I got rid of it all. Uh, I see Aaron Parker on here. So, so true. Thank you, Aaron. I even archived my Facebook group because I know what the basics are. The basics are me and my ability to polish my, my, my story to edifying Josh and Jenna, making them the deal and then getting as many people as I possibly can in front of that effective presentation. 
And then from there, I want to introduce them to Joss and Jenna's training because the only thing that I need to teach them to do is how to teach other people how to create a free account, how to teach other people to point, guide, and direct, do a Zoom with them, and then basically sit down and do a Zoom with them to get to know them so they know that you care and you can actually help them build the enthusiasm and excitement of showing them how to get paid. And then work with them, work with them to contact the people that they're scared to contact. And so it's neat because, you know, me sharing this with Joss and Jenna, they want me to teach this at the mastermind that will be happening, you know, next weekend. And so I just wanted to share each and every one of you that if you look at my career, the times that I've made the most money is the four years, the seven years, now the, the, the four years with, with MDC, where my number one focus is how I could cut out all the BS and do nothing but get people in front of an awesome opportunity. So there it is. So now I've even asked my wife to make sure that she reminds me if my mind gets out of here. And you guys will crack up when I say this, but I'll say to her, you know, honey, what does MDC have to do for us? What does MDC have to do for Robert? Uh, pay me on time. They do not need to do anything else. They need to pay me on time. Some of you are going, oh my God, I'm all about the product. I'm all about, the okay, great. They have to create a product that has value to it, that actually gives a benefit to people. And when you're marketing a product, oh my God, they should get them, get them on time. They should get them on time. And me and my wife have made millions marketing untangible products, products that were never shipped, like long distance, like energy, like travel, like Forex, like so, so now I can build businesses in other countries where we can't ship products. Just a thought. So my question to you is if you're not getting measurable results on a month to month basis and it's not continuing to grow, why do you continue to do the things that hurt your check? Must be ego. It's got to be ego. So I'm going to build a brand and I'm going to make myself more attractive because nobody else in my group can do that. <laughs> All right. So I've gone a little long. I love and appreciate you. I wanted to put this out there because the, the, the thought of being an apprentice, the thought of doing a dojo, a martial arts studio, and humbling yourself to the point where you got to start from nothing. I was sharing with my wife that it doesn't make a difference if you're black belt in jujitsu. When you go into Taekwondo, you're a white belt. Now, would you catch on to it? Yeah, if you come on to consistency, discipline and practice, so you keep getting gooder and gooder, you know you gotta put in your 10,000 hours. So now we're four years into MDC. This should be a good time for me to launch my own brand again. Um, I don't know. I'll reevaluate after master. I'll reevaluate after a million dollars a month. I'll reevaluate when the money is where I can afford to do something that I know that can be duplicated. So I love and appreciate you. Thank you so much. If you want to do me a huge personal favor, please share this video to, um, I'm going to say it, it's going to hurt. Please share this video with all the egomaniacs that are telling you that the way to be successful is to build a brand. Because here's the challenge that I would love to do. For all the people that teach people how to build a brand, let's really ask them to be honest and transparent and truthful that when they first made their first money in this profession that they started with building a brand. Because they did not. I know them all. And every one of them, when they first got involved in their network marketing and went out and made money, 
they did it simple. They did it easy. They did it duplicatable. They promote and edify the system, the people that were already documented. That's what gave them the money. And then once they got the money, they did like me, I'm not beating them up, is they lost their mind and they became the deal and then thought that they should teach people to teach the deal. You know, be the brand. So if no one's giving you permission to succeed in life, let me be the first. I love and appreciate you. Please share this with everyone you know. Thanks again to Gwen and Kai and Eric and Anad. Is that an and Anand? Maybe that's how you say it. Duplication is king. Absolutely. Hi, Elisa. Hi, John. I know this doesn't let me go all the way back, uh, but please share this with people that you know that are struggling with uh, um, egoitis. <laughs> I'd rather have money and free time than be right all the time. So love and appreciate you guys. For those of you that want to make a full-time income so you can get, 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 leave your job and get freedom in life, learn to be an apprentice. Learn to be an apprentice for a while. Learn to be an apprentice until you become a black belt and then think about opening up your own dojo. Take care. God bless. See you soon.